This is the More to the Story podcast with Dr. Andy Miller. We hope you guys enjoyed today's conversation. What do we mean by heaven anyways? That's what we're going to talk about on today's More to the Story podcast. Thanks for checking this out. If you get a chance, we would love it if you could just make a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, or better yet, when people have an opportunity to share a link, like via text or on your social media, that really helps us expand what happens. Some people like think, oh, that's nothing significant to that, but I have seen like uh, podcasts go up in the dozens or sometimes hundreds because one person has shared a link. So that's a way you could help us kind of spread the word about what's going on here through the More to the Story podcast, where a lot of times I have interviews or we have content and teaching like this. So we're really really thankful for the opportunity to be able to share with you in this moment. So this idea, I'll go, whoa, sorry, I almost forgot. I wanted to get into talk about heaven. I'm so excited to talk about it. But this podcast is brought to you by WBS, Wesley Biblical Seminary, where I work. It's the most diverse seminary in the country, and we offer uh, undergraduate degrees, a variety of master's degrees to get you ready for ministry, and also doctor of ministry degrees. And there are programs like our Wesley Institute that aren't for credit at all, but wonderful Christian education programs that I think would benefit your life. So check that out at wbs.edu. Also, we're brought to you by WPO Development. They're a company that has offices all over the country, and they do mission planning studies, capital campaigns, strategic plans. They really come, and their CEO, Keith Waters, my friend, says, if you don't know where you're going, any path will get you there. And he helps groups, churches, organizations develop a plan and actualize it so they can become the group that God's called them to be. So check them out at info at wpodevelopment.com. We have links to both these groups in our show notes. Now back to this idea. What do we mean by heaven anyways? In a past podcast, we talked about rather than that our dog or our cat or our pets in general will be there. But here, I want to just get a little bit more clarity, get into a little bit more clarity about what we mean by heaven in general. Now, like I've said before, my experience has been this. Just trust us. Heaven's going to be good. And that's kind of like this I can only imagine type of theology. I can only imagine that great song by Mercy Me. There's even a movie made about it. I mean, it's a great song, but really, altogether, it's just kind of pointing to this ethereal reality. When I like to think of this as more tangibly, and that's what scripture presents to us a real visual, uh, like touchable ex- reality that we can experience. And so, one of the things that can happen for us is that when we kind of put off this I'll fly away, let's just get away from our current world type of theology, we miss the bigger picture. And really, I think this downgrades our evangelistic efforts because what are we actually presenting people with? Like we're presenting people with an opportunity for eternity to experience a new heaven and new earth, new raised bodies, resurrected bodies in a resurrected universe. Like we're not just asking for people to experience some disembodied Yoda-like state, you know, like in Star Wars, the movie Star Wars, like, okay, we're gonna be kind of like Obi-Wan Kenobi, like a force ghost walking around somewhere. No, we, we have something better. Like not just like a force ghost, like, like a real touchable reality. When Jesus was raised from the dead, you know, we sing this song, made like him, like him we rise in, on Easter, Christ the Lord is risen today. We don't say, sing, you know, made like him, like him, we live in a non-physical state like Yoda forever. No, made like him, like him we rise. Jesus is, N.T. Wright says this, Jesus is the model and means of our own resurrection. He's the, like our bodies will be raised just like Jesus's body. Did you know that? Like, I'll tell you, I did not grow up with that understanding. I just grew up with a, heaven's gonna be great, you wanna be there. And I did, that was good enough motivation for me, and especially to avoid hell. But ultimately, like, we get to experience something that's more full than that. Made like him, like him we rise. Jesus is the model and the means. When we say the means, it's be through Jesus that we'll experience this eternal state. So I want to give you an illustration that I got the kind of basic bones of this illustration from Randy Alcorn in his book, Heaven. But I think it will be helpful to us. So imagine, like, uh, just my last appointment in the Salvation Army, Abby and I led a ministry in addition to the Salvation Army Church. We also had a, sh- a shelter, an emergency shelter downtown. Now imagine you are living in that emergency shelter, and all of a sudden some com- somebody comes to you, an official cour- courier who's come in a limousine, and they come and they say your name, and they say, are you so-and-so? Well, we have a package for you. And you sign away on the package, and then you find that you just learned that you actually have inherited 
an amazing, amazing estate. Like, and you will have an opportunity to move, let's just say, San Diego. San Diego's a beautiful place. You're, this is Tampa, Florida, but you get to move to San Diego. People say it <clears throat> has the best climate in the whole world. So, like, let's say you just move. You, you have an all-expense-paid trip there. Not only that, you're going to live there. All your family's going to be there. You'll have work, meaningful opportunities, and you'll be able to experience everything you've ever longed for there. Okay, so you have this ticket, this one-way ticket to get there. And so you go and you get go to D, you go to the airport and you get on a plane. Now you're going to the plane, but unfortunately, what you have to do is you actually have to stop at DFW. So you're in Tampa, Florida. You get into San Diego at some point, but you're going to stop at the DFW airport where you're going to pick up some family and friends. Now, going on the on the airplane and getting to DFW airport is really nice. Like it's a lot nicer than the Salvation Army's homeless shelter in Tampa, right? You get some food, you get some service. It's really a fine reality. But ultimately, if you were to say to somebody, maybe back at the homeless shelter, where are you going? Would you say DFW Airport? Would you say that's where you're headed? No, you'd say, I'm going to San Diego where I'm going to experience a beautiful estate. Like I have everything I've ever longed for there. So you wouldn't say that you're going to DFW. You wouldn't say you're going to the airport. Well, this is what we've ended up doing with heaven. Like we end up saying, like we describe what's sometimes referred to classically, theologically as the intermediate state. This place where we go where to be absent from the body is present with the Lord, where our souls go after our bodies die. Now that is a good place. Like, and Paul says he would rather be there, right? <clears throat> but if that's all that we're experiencing, like it's not the full picture. The full picture is to get to San Diego. Now, if this illustration were perfect, I imagine that actually instead of going on to San Diego, we come back to Tampa and the homeless shelter would be transformed into that beautiful estate where you have a place to work and you experience art and beauty and relationships and God's presence in a powerful way that you wouldn't have anywhere else. But it's not a perfect illustration. But I think you get the idea of the two-stage reality that we're talking about. Because Revelation talks about this. For instance, John of Patmos says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling is now among the people and he will be with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. This is, this is the picture, not of us going up to heaven, but heaven and eternal realities coming down to earth, right? The problem is we use shorthand or like texting language to describe this, right? Like JK or, or uh, in my humble opinion, or all these type of things, right? We say heaven, just heaven in general. Well, really, what the Christian tradition has talked about for Centuries is this two-stage reality of heaven, intermediate state, then leading to the eternal state. Or we could call it, Randy Alcorn has this good definition. He says we could call it present heaven, the intermediate present heaven, or the eternal state, eternal heaven. Like this is what we're all longing for, and this is what God has put within us, a place where we can experience all the desires that are at the heart of who we are as a person. Like I can't get my kids excited about being a ghost. But I can get them excited about the idea of eating, drinking, playing, worshiping, loving, and laughing to God's glory. This is the promise of the resurrection. This is the promise, eternal delight and joy in God's presence. This is so much better than this kind of shallow view of heaven that we often describe. And it's in this view that I say, there's no need for a bucket list. You don't have to just like get it all done in this life. Instead, we're going to have an opportunity to experience in our bodies, in our real bodies, a world where we get to do things that we couldn't do in this world, a world that will not be cursed with sin in the same way that we experience it right now. So I say, instead of I can only imagine, I say this, let's imagine. Let's do it. Let's imagine. I think God gave us an imagination so we can do just that. Imagine heaven. A world without suffering, pain, war, cancer, dictators, or corrupt systems. Like, this is what we're longing for. And I think this is a compelling picture that we can point people to. I'll fly away isn't good enough. Like, I, we could change the words to say, I'll rise one day. Now, I'm not totally against the I'll fly away song, 
right? I kind of, uh, there is a way that our souls will fly away when we immediately die. But it also needs to point to the fact that we'll rise one day. And ultimately, the new heavens and new earth is that picture. So when we talk about heaven, that's what we mean. We want something bigger. Something for maybe somebody on the podcast right now who's dealing with addictions, who's dealing with um, challenges in your family life. Maybe even the checking of our phone hundreds of times a day looking for good news is pointing us to a place where we want something more. Your heart, your essence of your being was made for the kingdom, this new earth, and it'll only be satisfied in him. This is what we mean by heaven, and I want you to experience it. And if you'd like to, you know, go to andymillerthird.com, send me a message. I'd be glad to talk to you further about this. Ultimately, it comes when we're able to repent of our sins and believe in Jesus Christ, believe in his life, death, and resurrection, believe in the revelation of him through scripture, and ultimately commit our lives to him. And ultimately, God has more to your story than just being dissatisfied with our world as it is. Instead, there's more to the story. There's, God wants you to experience what he has for you right now. He wants you to be a holy person now. He wants you to experience the power of your, the Holy Spirit in your life. Peter says this in 2 Peter chapter 3. In keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwell. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. And that's really my prayer for you, that you'll experience this full view of heaven and that that would impact your life now. Thanks for joining me on the More to the Story podcast. God bless you. <laughs>